uh, really great insight into some of the drama of uh, the early 16th century. I think we're now very quickly going to hear from John Cooper about the research of Kirsty Wright, who would have been giving a paper in this slot. Her paper title was Ransacking Papers for Precedence, Politics and the Past in the Exchequer of Receipt, 1580 to 1630. So I'll, I'll just pass on to John now for a summary. Thank you very much. Well, this, this really is putting me on the spot. Um, Kirsty, unfortunately, can't be here today because she's lost her voice. Uh, I bear some responsibility for her losing her voice because she's actually teaching a couple of sections of my Tudor regime module at the University of York, and obviously has had such talkative York students uh, that she's uh, lost her voice in the process. So she's, she's gutted, actually, not to be here. Um, but uh, I, just for a couple of minutes, I thought I'd just alert you uh, to the significance um, of her research and some of the questions that she's thinking about. So Kirsty is a third year um, PhD student at the University of York working with me. Um, she's funded by um, the Society of Architectural Historians of Great Britain and the University of York. Um, and she's really focusing on the buildings of the former St. Stephen's College um, in the Palace of Westminster. Now this is a subject that links more than one person in the room. Um, so Elizabeth Biggs, who you saw earlier this morning, wrote her doctoral thesis um, on St. Stephen's College between 1348 and 1548. I've been working on this space for a long time. I'd love to show you a slide of the Palace of Westminster. Of course, I haven't come prepared with that, I'm afraid. Um, but uh, Murray Tremellian here in the, the fetching scarlet mask in the front row is, um, is sort of uh, picking up um, the story in the in this uh, later 18th and early 19th centuries in that same space. Um, what Kirsty is thinking about is the relationship between um, the medieval um, English crown institution of the Exchequer um, and the former buildings of St Stephen's College as they are um, repurposed as a result of the Reformation that closes down St Stephen's College. So the chapel itself becomes the House of Commons chamber where the House of Commons remains until 1834. But there's also a cloister. There are vicars and canons houses that were initially investigated by Elizabeth Biggs. And it's those spaces, it's, it's the use of those spaces within the Palace of Westminster that Kirsty has been thinking about. And some of the questions that she's been thinking about are the extent to which Exchequer is an unchanging or an ossified institution in the 16th century, which is how it's conventionally portrayed, or is actually still um, in motion, still in flux, still vibrant and still valuable to um, the English crown. Now we've heard from more than one speaker already today how important those ex uh, the Exchequer was, but also how critical Exchequer records are. And where some other records have disappeared, that remarkably, the Exchequer records have survived, and not quite an unbroken, but a fantastically rich set of resources for medieval and early modern historians. And, and what Kirsty is doing is, is sort of thinking through the relationship between Exchequer and the spaces within the Palace of Westminster in order to um, uh, explore some of those political cultural relationships. Um, ventriloquizing for her, uh, one of the things I think is most fascinating about what she's done is she's actually sort of reconstructed a typical day as if you were an auditor or a clerk working in the Exchequer, um, including the, the spatial layout of the, uh, of the buildings of the Exchequer, which were at the opposite end of Westminster Hall uh, from St. Stephen's Chapel, um, and they were on several stories. Um, and uh, you know, she's, she's re recovered this in marvellous detail, including clerks doing their work and actually then essentially um, dropping their paperwork down a pipe in the floor where it plops onto a table um, in uh, the, 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 the tier of administration below and another set um, of men, they were all men, uh, clerks um, get working on those papers and start um, claiming their fees. Um, so these same spaces um, that were inhabited by exchequer clerks in the 16th century, um, they, they are both office space and they become domestic space. So the, um, the auditor of the Exchequer develops a very fine townhouse there, which goes through a whole series of emendations uh, into the 18th century, 
at which point it's fundamentally remodeled. Um, and this is what Murray Trevelyan's research focuses on as it becomes a house or the speaker of the House of Commons. So we see in Kirsty's work a whole nexus of interactions between administrative history, I mean, what you might call her work the new administrative history, but also um, social culture, uh, sociability and ritual. And I think what she is recovering in terms of how the exchequer functions, that looks to me not simply like um, clerks doing their job. There is an element of ritual life, I think, in, in, that, in that crown administration world of the 16th century. And what, it was particularly unfortunate she can't be here because what her most recent work is doing is thinking about the interaction between this and antiquaries and antiquarianism um, and record keeping. And so she has, um, in the nick of time, in the last 10 minutes, sent through a sort of a one paragraph description. So I'll give you that and then I'll sit down and we can think about questions. Um, my research, Kirsty's research, examines the exchequer of receipt. There were two exchequers, the upper exchequer and the exchequer of receipt. This is where the money comes in um, within the Palace of Westminster and its political significance within early modern government. It takes an architectural approach to administrative history to re-examine the receipt as a place which acted as a point of contact between state and subject. And that question of point of contact, that's obviously picking up a language that was used by Professor Sir Jelfrey Elton back in the 1950s um, and through to the end of his work. Um, in the 1990s, Parliament as a point of contact was one of the, the kind of final great um, contributions that Geoffrey Elton made to our understanding um, of English politics and um, uh, the court and, and the, particularly the Palace of Westminster. In fact, Kirsty is picking up that language of point of contact between state and subject, um, but she's taking it further because she's thinking about exchequer as a custodian of financial patronage so the sort of human relationships that persist within this structure and a custodian of memory. And there she's really picking up on the work of um, one of my uh, medieval colleagues um, who did have a, a, a career um, in the National Archives and then moved on um, to become a very senior official within the House of Lords, Elizabeth Hallam Smith. And Elizabeth Hallam Smith has fed through a lot of her research to me and to Murray Tremellan and Kirsty Wright, and I'd like to acknowledge her work that she's also a fellow um, of this society. But Kirsty's work reconstructs the internal layout, actually room by room, space by space, of the receipt of the Exchequer in some of the same ways that Murray is doing uh, for the rooms of the Speaker's House from the 1790s. She fo focuses in particular on the reuse of the former St. Stephen's College buildings. Um, and really contributes to our better understanding of the reuse of the Palace of Westminster, the repurposing of the Palace of Westminster as this really ceases to be a royal palace in the very early 16th century and becomes the preeminent place of crown administration. And this is something that I've looked at in some of my current work in terms of the repurposing of St. Stephen's Chapel um, as the House of Commons Chamber. It's also at the kind of latter end of Elizabeth Biggs's work with her kind of Tudor hat on rather than her medieval Ireland hat on um, in terms of thinking about the repurposing um, of the palace after the palace fire of 1512 to 13 when Henry VIII moves out um, and the Palace of Westminster is really given over to become the preeminent point of crown administration. But by considering questions of place and space, Kirsty's work enables attention to be refocused on the people who move between the spaces that Exchequer occupied. So movement within the Palace of Westminster, reconstructed in quite a forensic way, is an important part of what she's doing in order to understand the value and the nature of administrative office and the changing use of those offices over time. As the, her clerks of the Exchequer, shift, and this is the really critical point, I think, in, in her current work, shift from everyday clerical roles to politically influential sinecures. And I think it's quite clear that a lot of her exchequer clerks and auditors are no longer simply the people who are claiming fees for copying out exchequer dockets. Um, that can actually be delegated to other people. Um, they are politically significant. And some of these people are politically connected with parliamentarians, who of course are simply at the other end of Westminster Hall, 
exchequer and parliament are literally cheek by jowl in, in the 16th century. And increasingly, a number of those auditors and clerks are themselves antiquarians. They are interested in the uh, ransacking of records, whether those are exchequer records or whether those are state paper records. And of course, those aren't held in some public record office. They're not held um, in the British Library. There, a lot of them are still on site and accessible uh, within the Palace of Westminster or the Jewel Tower or other adjacent spaces. So Kirsty's very sorry that she couldn't be here. Um, her paper would have opened out some of those issues through examination of the largely neglected role of the receipt in record keeping and its intersection with antiquarian scholarship through discussion of the architecture of the four treasuries of the receipt in the Palace of Westminster. If any of you, if that sparks your interest, then Kirsty is very happy to share a copy of the text of her paper with any of you in the room. Um, and if you want to come and talk to me afterwards, I'll be happy to pass on her contact details. So thank you for your time.